Welcome into the Think Deeper podcast presented by Focus Press. It's Jack, it's Joe, it's Will. This week we're going to be talking about aliens. We're going to be talking about the headlines, the UFOs, the extraterrestrials, all that stuff. I had half a mind to do the uh, the youth minister thing of let's talk about aliens and how we're aliens and strangers on this planet according to God's word. And no, I no we're <laughs> thank you, thank you for not actual doing that. aliens. Yeah, I was thinking uh, BBS where we just paint ourselves green and come out in aliens costumes or man, something. Man, VBS is always taken straight from that. Joe. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Any chance he gets. Any chance he I gets. thought you were going to make a cheesy uh, joke and say this episode is going to be out of this world or something like that. Uh, oh, nice. Why did we not? <laughs> I don't know. Missed oh, that one. Man. Well, anyway, I don't think we have anything to promote. I mean, remember, uh, Focus Plus, we just rolled out Understudied, our study through Revelation, in addition to everything else that's going up there on Focus Plus every week. All kinds of content, so focuspress.org slash P-L-U-S, and check that out. Otherwise, let's let's talk about the alien thing. Joe, why don't you lay out why we're talking about this? Because I think we've gotten that response a little bit of, what a waste of time. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think it's a waste of time, just because this is so captivating. Because, honestly, if there is something to this, or if, or if this keeps snowballing, it will be the biggest story in the world. And so, why are we doing a Think Deeper on this? Yeah, everybody's talking about it. And it didn't just start so recently. They had a congressional hearing where the guy, and we just looked this up literally right before I came. Um, what was his name? Grush. Uh, David Grush. David Grush. Thank you. There you go. There's Former U.S. Rank. intelligence. I apologize. Official. We're not using that. I don't remember what it was. Something Grush. Correct. Yeah. He's a former U.S. intelligence official, is what uh, NBC News has him as. And um, he's presenting before this panel. And they're talking about, basically, do we have UFOs? And they call them unidentified aerial projectiles or something like that. Like UAPs, UAPs I yeah. Um, yeah, there you go. And, uh, yeah, do we have any of those? And he's basically like, yeah, I, we do. And then he said, like, he doesn't have firsthand account of this, but he's been told by those that are high up and that he's connected with that they have non-human biological material, which, of course, everybody runs to aliens. Um so that's kind of been the biggest thing that hit headlines. I got on Twitter and like the first five topics were having something to do with that trending topics uh, just started to explode. But before that, we had the woman on the plane. And I don't think you had seen this. No, one, actually, I still have. It's surprising I've, because, yeah. oh my word, this was just blowing up. But blowing up on Twitter is different than blowing up in the world. And I sometimes have to remind myself of that because it's easy to like look at it and go, man, if everybody on Twitter's talking about it, the rest of the world is. In reality, that's like 0.02% of the world. Um, but woman's on the plane, she's flipping out and says, I've got to get off this plane and walks to the front and then starts screaming back. There is cussing, um, some language in the video, but she's screaming about how the man is not real. And there were all sorts of different reports. The guy blinked sideways instead of up and down. He, um, you know, he said he's Satan, uh, all these reports. And then you have people that are like, I was on the plane and here's what happened. Well, there's no way to actually know that. Right. Um, so but it kind of exploded as to what is she talking about? Was this man real? And then they tried to find her so they could interview her and nobody could figure out who she is. And so the question was, was she real? Like what exactly is happening here? And then there was another news story that I ran across that also had a similar thing happen. And so people are starting to wonder what's going on and are there aliens? And the congressional hearing comes on the, the heels of a major, I think they just unclassified a ton of documents, if I remember right, of kind of the, um, the U.S. government and, and the CIA looking into UFOs and things like that. Um, and so that was already peaking interest. People are already interested. And now here comes this hearing where the guy is confirming, quote unquote, uh, that, that we have this non -bi or non-human biological material. So yes, it's in the news. And since it seems to be on a lot of people's minds, that's one of the reasons we're discussing it. Well, and I want to say something to the, to the crowd that, uh, again, as Jack stated, kind of brushes it aside or waves a hand and says, ah, it's, it's not really important or, you know, why are you guys talking about this? Listen, uh, you're going to hear throughout this episode, I am just about as skeptical as it can get when it comes to aliens and extraterrestrial life and anything like that. And so this is not, you're not hearing this from, at least for me personally, as somebody who, you know, just loves aliens. I, I have never seen E.T. I've never seen the alien movies. I've never seen signs. Like this is, I, I could not care less, to be honest, 
about a lot of the, the the Hollywood depiction of it. I know like people like my brother are just enthralled with it and think it's the coolest thing ever. That's not me. However, I feel like it's very foolish for us to just wave this kind of thing aside and say, yeah, not really worth talking about. You know, we need to be talking about more important things. Let's move on because I'm going to beat this drum again. I've beaten this drum before. If young people in our in our congregations, younger people, I should say, think that our response to everything, which unfortunately it often is, if they think that our response is, ah, that doesn't really matter. Let's just talk about, you know, the gospel or let's just, you know, that type of stuff doesn't matter. We need to be above it all. They're going to go to other places for answers. They're going to go to, to, to resources and they're going to go to, to outlets for their information and for their answers that we trust a whole lot less. And so, Again, I beat that drum before, but I, I want to warn, uh, uh, give a warning to all the people who might be looking at it like, man, why, why is this? Why are we even talking about this? We should just move on to other more important things. Listen, we have questions. People have questions. All these sightings and things that we're going to talk about, kind of hard to believe that they're all made up. And so, obviously, there's a lot we're going to get into with this episode. But I wanted to, to lay that out there as a warning to those who are going to listen to this and be like, man, this is just not important. We because again, those especially of the younger generation want to know. They are intrigued. They are fascinated with this topic. And for, for a lot of people in, in the church to just say, doesn't matter, don't worry about it, move on to something else, that's going to turn them off to, again, going, to, as we talked about before, going to older people for information or for wisdom on this kind of thing. So I don't think it's an off-limits topic, and none of us do, of course, and that's, that's why we're discussing it for this episode. And so I wanted to say that because we did get a little bit of, oh, why are you guys talking about that as, as we prep for this episode? Jack, do you have anything to add to that? Oh yeah, there's another level of this in that I think some people don't realize that it is becoming a legitimate discussion really fast. This has always been the area of crackpots, the area of that nerdy kid in your school who, you know, was always on the computer trying to, you know, tell everybody about this stuff. Uh, tinfoil hat, all that crazy stuff. conspiracy theories. Yeah, I mean, remember the the aliens meme guy, the History Channel. I think his name is like Giorgio Tsoukalos or whatever. And he crazy haired guy and just goofy looking dude and blamed everything on aliens. That's how the pyramids were built: aliens, aliens, aliens. And, and so it was a joke until a few years ago, where the U.S. military says, "Hey, you know, the pilots, we're seeing some stuff, some flying objects that are doing stuff that it shouldn't be doing." And then, you know, the, the testimony that came out the other day, this has been building for like five or six years now where they're given a little more. They even released video of a thing on their radar, just all over the place, crazy speeds, all of that. And, and so they're treating it seriously in ways that previously they, it had always been held off as crackpot material. But then what you start to see is under the surface, they've been treating it seriously for a long time. I mean, 1947 is kind of the watershed year, post-World War the II. Roswell incident. Big sighting, yeah. and yeah, Roswell, and, and everything that, that's kind of come after that, and you realize the military and others have been doing studies on people uh, asking questions, their sightings, their claims, or whatever. They've taken it seriously this whole time, and now they're coming out with stuff saying that it is, and we're going to get into, they could just, they may just be making all this up, and that's entirely possible, just as a distraction, as a, hey, look over here, don't look at the, the political things going on, don't look at the gas prices or whatever, uh, the scandals, that is entirely possible. You at least got to answer it, you got to address it, you know, and again, as Christians, some of these questions really implicate the faith, and so that's one of the other things we want to talk about as well, is if there is something to this and it really starts building more, that's going to be one of the biggest attacks, as Will brought up on young people, of, oh, you believe in God? Well, how does this fit with the Bible? And so we we need to handle this stuff. Well, and yeah, and so let's go ahead and get into kind of why so many people are so hesitant to accept that maybe it's a possibility. And it's because, you know, there's a, a website or a company, Answers in Genesis, that... Um, Put out a lot of great stuff. They, I think they're they're behind the Creation Museum. I'm pretty sure, aren't they in Kentucky? And those Ark people, yeah, the Ark Encounter. Really good work on like creationism and stuff like that. Um, they've got a, a. It's one of the first things you you find on Google when you search "Should Christians Believe in Aliens?" Is their um, their page on it about how it affects the Christian faith. And to be honest, this is kind of what I always believed growing up, which is why I never paid any attention to anything about aliens. Like, I was like, oh, yep, fake, whatever. I'm never, never interested. So let's talk about that, because a lot of people view it as a significant threat to biblical accuracy. The idea that if alien extraterrestrial life is discovered, 
then that that immediately kind of refutes the Bible. So I guess I'll turn it over to Joe if you want to get into that as far why people believe that, I guess I should say. Like, why is it that a lot of people view this as a threat to biblical accuracy if there are aliens? Well, sure, because first and foremost, I think the creation of man and us being the pinnacle of God's creation is thrown into question. Are we? Were we the last thing created? Were we uh, the pinnacle of God's creation? Or did he create the earth get it spinning almost from a deist perspective and then go and create other worlds and and do other things and then where does that put man in the hierarchy because scripture shows we are here you know a little while lower than the angels it's talking about jesus but i think also to us and that we'll be the ones judging the angels and so there's this hierarchy from a spiritual perspective and from a man perspective and revelation kind of brings these two things together of the angelic demonic realm and then earth coming together right okay we don't see a third option we see the heavenly realm or spiritual realm. We see the earthly realm. We don't see the, you know, this third realm on Venus or on some far off planet or whatever. And where would that fit into the biblical narrative? We don't see it in scripture. And it would, to me, challenge the creation of man and just the, the very idea of the rede- the plan of redemption, the creation. Because that's the other thing is, did Jesus die for every alien out there? Did he, like, die did he go to everyone. other planets like he and died die for on everyone the cross on, Earth, but on other planets as well? Yeah. Exactly. How many times do you have to die? And does that make them, again, different? Like, does that mean he had to die multiple times? Like, that doesn't seem... Then it almost seems like it would be we're not as special and God seems to put us as pretty special. So, I don't know. I think that's why people struggle with it for those reasons. Jack, what else would you add to that? Yeah, it really is all those things. The thing you said at the end there about the, the specialness of... If this is just like a, a game God's running on every planet out there, and there, there's just billions of planets or whatever the the claim is, that yeah, that every one of them, or or in every solar system at the very least, there's a planet that has people or or beings, intelligent beings, and and God is dealing with them and giving them law like that. That's really not part of it, as you said. Creation is very limited. It puts man at the pinnacle of it, and yeah, I, like if if that whole system is called into question i think that would hurt genesis if that were the case and so i think that's one of the reasons why this is used and and will be as as they keep pushing it for people to try and shake people's faith is to say well your bible doesn't say this it doesn't tell us about these creatures if you're interpreting it a certain way and and they if somebody believes that there is something going on there and so yeah i mean there is the other side of it that no this isn't a threat uh some would say well god can do whatever he wants God could create all those other planets, other beings, or whatever. And that that's true, but man, it really doesn't fit with what he has revealed to us. Well, because that and well, that's the other thing that I, I think I brought up talking to you guys off air is that even the things that aren't material or human, like angels, demons, um, you know, giants we see, you know, we at least see some kind of description of them in the Bible. You don't get any of that with aliens. And so that that causes that gives cause to pause as well. I was gonna ask you guys, how would you answer, because this is something that I've heard quite a bit, the postulation of, well, it's pretty arrogant for us as humans to think that we are the only um, you know, intelligent beings out there and that we are kind of at the top. You know, that's something that it's kind of the I don't know, virtue signaling position, I guess, that they're trying to play the moral card of like, we need to be humble and think that maybe there's other people out there. Um, but that is an interest. So I guess I would ask you guys if, if, if somebody said that to you, like the, that posed that question of, isn't it kind of arrogant to think that we're the only people? Because I do think it is arrogant to think that, you know, we, that God has revealed everything to us. Obviously, I don't think he has. He's revealed a great deal. But we've talked in previous episodes about how it's foolish and ignorant for us to put ourselves in the place of God, and the mind of God. His ways are not our ways, all that stuff. And so let's say somebody brought came to you with that. What would you respond with? I mean, in the Christian system, he died for us, only for us. And I mean, that in itself, like there, there's literally no way to have a higher value placed on us is God becoming flesh and dying for us. Now, it's humbling that he had to do that, but it's also very uplifting, very lofty sets us on a, a pretty high spot in his estimation that that happened and and so yeah i mean it's like the fact that we would be the only ones yeah that that follows because he already put us that high well he made man in his image you know like we're in the image of god he gave us the breath of life he gives us the holy spirit and also in ephesians 1 and talking about sealing us with the holy spirit the other aspect of that is it, it mentions that basically the in his inheritance in the saints 
which you can read it a couple different ways. The way I read it is we are his inheritance. We are what Jesus gets at, at the end of all things. Like he came to die and all he wants is for us to be with him, the bride of Christ. That's pretty high. I like there's, you know, God, and you see this in the Psalms and you see this in other places in scripture. God thinks quite highly of us um, and not from an error. We have no reason to be arrogant. That's just the value that he places on us. Could he go create other things and other beings and other places? Absolutely, he's God. I don't doubt the power, but again, he seems to place us at the hierarchy, which is why taking dominion is he's so He's not important. the author of confusion either. We know that. You know, it, it, I don't I don't think that there's, you know, possibilities of, well, there's things that kind of contradict what God has revealed, but hey, he's God. So, I mean, like Jack said earlier, he's not going to contradict what he's already revealed. So, let's get into... The things that, that are reported, I mean, obviously there have been so many sightings, so many things that are out there. It is very difficult to surmise that every single person is lying. Every single person is making it up. They're all under the same hallucination. Like, what are we in the tens of thousands of of, report, of people that have reported sightings at this point? Probably more than that. Um, but I, I do also think it's important, which we haven't done yet, to distinguish or to, to at least describe what we're talking about when we, when we say aliens. Because... What do people think of when they think aliens? They think Martians, right? Little little green people with one eye, Cyclops, you know, people that are driving, you know, spaceships like in Star Wars. And a lot of people's minds probably go to Star Wars, right? Because the, those are the, that's the Hollywood has depictions of aliens that all of our minds go to. That's not really what we're talking, or not what I'm talking about, at least when when we get into this next section of things that maybe people have seen. I don't think anybody's seen a Martian. I don't believe anybody's seen. You know, the little green guys from Toy Story, right? You know, you have saved our lives. We No, I don't think that that is something that people have seen. So if that's the case, I would, I would imagine you guys would echo that. What are people seeing? What what are these things? If they're not all lying, if, if they're not all making it up, what are some of these things? What, what do you guys have to, to, to say to that? It is interesting you bring up that we've got a lot of documentation of, of people claiming to see something. And... People, you can see where there'd be early on, like, claims, and then everybody else would copycat it, but also, like, things, people claiming seeing similar things, people in, in certain areas, multiple people seeing the same thing at the, on the same night kind of thing, and things like, uh, in fact, I had somebody comment on uh, my Facebook when I posted that we were, we were doing this episode, sharing experiences he had of seeing just things flying low flying in a very strange way with lights all around it uh, a lot of times people describe a cigar shaped flying object and then other times it's like a, a triangle shape almost like a big dorito in the sky or something you know, with lights all over it and so there's there's the ships the things that people claim to have seen and then a lot of times it's where they see the beings it's a gray being it's a you know, but it, it, that almost does look like sometimes when they they do the sketches of of what they saw the some of the uh, I don't know the the typical believed things the the drawings whatever of uh, the 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 pop culture version of aliens signs or whatever uh, there there is some overlap there and so um, there's there's you know there's that whole system of ranking the encounters of the first second third fourth fifth kind of like you notice something you, you you saw the ship itself you saw the creature itself you spoke to the creature itself whatever and and so when people report this stuff they do put them through those rankings and these are some of the things they've seen joe did you have something no i was just thinking cool rancher uh you know nacho cheese doritos in the sky uh, to me i think that there's too many stories that are real and there's too many things that we don't understand well, hold on, hold on. Look, when you say too many stories that are real, what do you mean? From people that have no reason to lie. I think a dad, he's one of them. Uh, he was with a buddy. They saw a thing come flying in as fast as can be, hit, stop on a dime and go in a different direction. Looked at his buddy and said, what'd you just see? He said, I just saw something fly unbelievably fast, hit, stop on a dime and go. He's like, that's exactly what I just saw. They can't explain this. This was what, back in the 80s? Like, yeah, because my dad is, he's definitely looking to be in the papers. You know what I mean? Like, come on. There's a bazillion people out there. I can tell you stories of clients that have told me things that they've witnessed, that they've seen, that are like, that can't be explained. They're not looking for notoriety. They ain't posting on Facebook about it. So I think it's so disingenuous to like put everybody in that, oh, well, they're all just 
out you know, of their it's, minds. It's hoax, yeah. and they're all conspiracy theorists, and they're out of their minds, and they're just looking for everybody to believe them. No, they're not. My dad doesn't tell that story to anybody. None of his friends know about that well, story. Well, you just told just the story to, to like a thousand, a thousand people, Joe. So. <laughs> there you go. So now everybody everybody knows. Dad is inadvertently... He knew when he told me that in 10 years, yeah, exactly. I'd, be, I'd be on a podcast, and he'd get his notoriety, finally. But like that's what I'm saying when I talk about real, is... There's the hoaxes for sure, and you see these guys that even in their later lives admit, okay, we kind of made this up, um, or that they are embellishing aspects of the story, and you can tell. Or like, doing the story it to try to sell something, like they're trying to get a profit it. from it. Yeah, they, exactly. They write the book and they make a ton of money on the book or the documentary, whatever it is. That's ridiculous. But there are hundreds of thousands of sightings, and one thing going around on social media is just notice how many are in in the U.S. And I'm sure some people have seen this, and may, they may be thinking that. Well, why doesn't this happen around the rest of the world? U.S. and Europe are the only ones that seem to have these sightings. Well, let's see. If a guy in the middle of Africa sees one, how exactly is he going to tell anybody about it? Like, he doesn't have the technology to get on Facebook and talk about it. He doesn't have the ability to get on his cell phone, or maybe maybe does now, but for the longest of time, we don't know what they saw. I went and spoke in Ghana, and they had some really weird stories about witch doctors that were putting voodoo on people that, like, legitimately worked. I mean, they had some bizarre stories, dreams that came true. I'm talking to a client the other day. She's dreaming things that literally would come true in a month. And there were three specific, very specific things that she dreamed. And she's like, that's really bizarre. Next thing you know, those things happen and she can't explain it. Yes, there are some things that are unexplainable that can't, but, you know, and you could say, well, that's pure coincidence. Hundreds of thousands of people seeing some of these, let's chalk. 90% of them up to being hoaxes and garbage. That still leaves a lot that we have to wrestle with and saying, what did they see? Well, thanks to Joe for for blowing up our outline there because those were uh, <laughs> yeah, points that we're supposed to get to in about twenty minutes. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, well, out. we'll get there. I well, know. Joe, we're I was, here. I was going to say you seem to be making a pretty good case then for Martians and for aliens. So is that what you believe in? <laughs> Let's get to it. <laughs> this is why I didn't get to that part of the outline. Yeah, no, I haven't. Well, got I, I, well we're just saying that of like the reality of you can say well. Anybody can say anything. That's true. Here's the thing that was a real kicker for me that, like, you do have to wrestle with. You have to explain this on some level. Is, as I said, we found out that people have been, the people who have had encounters or claimed encounters have been studied for decades. And one of the things they have consistently found is these people show real life trauma, like PTSD effects. Their their heart rate goes up when they talk about it. They're, they get sweaty. They, like, the same kind of thing when they would have military veterans recount or they would tell or show military veterans, you know, footage of, of where they were and it would like mess with their head and the, the heart rate and all those things. Same thing happens to people when reliving their I'm, encounters. I'm not a that psychologist. That's a very hard thing to fake. Yeah, I was going to say, that's really hard to fake. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody, it's, it's near impossible so to fake. One of the doctors who, who ran these studies said, the fact that somebody shows this reaction does not prove that the event actually occurred. What it does seem to indicate is the sincere belief in the emotional intensity of the memory, whether true or false. So, you know, whether whether it happened or it didn't, they believe it did. They really do believe what they're saying. And there's so many of these people who really do believe they saw something. And, again, even a, a Facebook friend of mine, uh, shout out. And so, you know, as a Christian, when you just go, ah, it's all garbage, there's nothing there. Like, well, hold on just a second. Like, you're going to call a lot of people, even other fellow Christians, straight up liars get just hear it out a little bit hear it out a little bit so let's let's get back to what we were going to go over here just uh, briefly the possibilities possibility number one yes there really are and that was will's question really are martians little green men whatever out there um let's let's entertain that for a minute uh I'm going to just straight off the top come out and say, no, I don't think so. But what, what do you guys I've say? already clearly said in my case, like, I don't, I don't believe in, in, the, in that kind of thing at all. I don't think so either. No. I, I, I do believe it doesn't fit with the biblical concept of, of the universe, number one. Number two, you just think about it, it's almost impossible. I mean, space travel, traveling at the speed of light because we're all so distant from all the other planets, beings, everything else, like the idea of something coming here knowing how to communicate with us, being anything like us that we could relate. Um, You know, somebody made the point of if you're traveling at the speed of light and you hit, you know, a pebble the size of a dime, your entire ship just, I mean, is obliterated. Like, it's not, and space is filled with junk like that. And so, you know, just, that's one of, and everything else. Right, that's one of many reasons why this just, 
doesn't seem that possible. People go, oh, well, wormholes were this, that. Technologically, no, but biblically, no. There's a lot of reasons to believe no. This is here's, not. Here's the right. other thing. Look out there, man. Like Abraham, where he says, look at the stars. If you've ever been in the darkest, and a lot of times there's too much light pollution, if you get out in the middle of nowhere, we go up in the mountains, and you get to see like truly all of the stars, and the longer you look, the more come into perspective as, as your eyes dilate and such. Like, why in the world would they come to Earth? Of all places, if they had that, well, no, boy, they're, they're coming into our atmosphere. Why in the world would they do that? Have you ever seen the Hubble telescope? You're telling me they're on other places. Like, how would they find us? Of all places in the entire known galaxy, they happen to stop at the one place where we believe in UFOs. Come on. Like, the, it, it just, it's such an impossibility. And all of these things that are theoretically possible, you know, the theoretical physics and, and wormholes and black holes and all of those things, like, we're still trying to determine if those things are real. And we're saying what would have to take place is not only are they real, but these other beings know exactly how to use them. And they happen to know that we have life forms here. I just don't see it. I'm going to say one other it. thing. It's kind of like the time travel thing. Like, if it were going to, ha- going to have happened, it already would have. Like, if there's somebody that advanced out there, it, it is very hard to believe that, you know, uh, there, there's just, yeah, the it's a no all around. Let's move on to the next one. Yeah, so the next, the next, okay. uh, the next possibility next one. is one that a lot of people um, are suggesting, and that is that it's not real and it's simply a distraction. That the, I guess specifically the government is trying to to throw this out there as a distraction for, um, like Jack said earlier, to get us off off track on things. And I will say, it it does strike me as awfully coincidental. And and to be clear, this this is not necessarily where I fall as far as okay, I think this is the correct option. Like it's it's all fake and it's just completely a distraction. However, I do find it very again awfully coincidental that. There's a huge movie that is making way more money than projected. Everybody's going to see it. Everybody's talking about it. The Sound of Freedom, talking about sex trafficking and, and really bringing some awful things to light. And then all of a sudden, guess what drops? The, the, you know, the, the fact that there is a, a congressional hearing where aliens are being reported. All of a sudden, guess what people have kind of stopped talking about? The Sound of Freedom. And now everybody's talking about aliens. So is it a coincidence I don't really th- you know, think that there really are many coincidences uh, in on in the world today. And so I, I do think that there is an element of if the government's wanting us to care really, you know, if the government's wanting us to be fascinated by something and to care passionately about something, might be a reason for that. And you can call me a conspiracy theorist, but you think about what happens with the Black Lives Matter movement, all the rioting, all that's dried up because there's no election anymore. You know what I mean? Like every time it's like, okay, we really need to care about this. Typically, there's because there's there's other things going on that they're wanting us to to not pay attention to, and so I do think that there is some legitimacy to this idea that okay, all the hype right now about it might be a distract might be a distraction. However, that's just speaking to right now. That doesn't that doesn't talk about like we we've, we've already laid out the history of of the sightings and how this has been something. Oh yeah, and I had a thought that I, I forgot to bring up, so I'll go ahead and bring this up and then let you guys react to this uh, this point about it being a distraction. You think about how much science has spent, how many billions of dollars have been spent on the search for evidence of extraterrestrial life on other planets. They haven't found any. Billions of dollars have been spent, the SETI program and, and everything NASA has done to try to find out, you know, is a possibility of life on other planets. And the reason they try to do it is because it does throw a pretty big wrench into the Christian faith. It does throw a pretty big wrench into creationism. They haven't found anything. And you have to imagine that if they found even the slightest thing that would suggest that, yes, there are Martians, extraterrestrial life, people living on Mars, they would be parading it around, uh, kind of shoving it in the face of Christians and saying, ha-ha, your creation beliefs are ridiculous because we found this. They haven't done that yet. And so I think that's a pretty pretty clear indicator. Sorry, I had to backtrack to our last point because I forgot what I was going to say. But I think that's a pretty clear indicator that, you no, know, Martians and little green creatures don't exist. So what do you guys have to say to that and then also the distraction point that I already brought up? We know the ridiculous lengths they're willing to go to to try to prove their points, such as Lucy. And, I mean, your dad in his seminars goes over all these Nebraska man and the Oprah man and all those. And how ridiculous. We found a pig's tooth two miles away from another toothpick and we called it, you know what I mean? Like stupid stuff. If they're willing to go to that level to try to prove their points – and they haven't even attempted that with Martians. To me, it's like they're not even close 
for to anything like that. They can't even begin. And to a lot fake of this. money has been spent. As far as it goes yeah. with, oh yeah, as far as it goes with the government, like the the conspiracy of Jack, you can get us in a Project Blue Beam, and there's other things like that. But I do think I was watching a Michael Heiser documentary. Um, Doctor Heiser is well known for the unseen realm and, and demonology and things like that. But uh, watching a documentary where he was talking about aliens, and he made the point they had this Project Paperclip back in the 40s, in the late 40s after the war. And this is like a documented thing. Is Truman was, President Truman was very against bringing in Nazi um, scientists and the Japanese scientists, even though we're talking some of the most brainy, brainiacs, biggest brainiacs in the world. But these guys knew things that, you know, we, we didn't even have technology, half the technology the Nazis had because they were working on so much stuff. Um, well, Truman didn't want them. And so what they did is when these files would come through, they'd kind of go through the guy's files, figure out who they wanted. They'd put a little paper clip and down the line that would tell the guys, tell the next guy in line, basically, you need to come up create with a brand a fake new story for who this guy is. Yeah. Uh, create, yes, exactly. Fake his identity will get him into the country. Well, we had a nuclear or we had a major government facility in Roswell, New Mexico. So all these things happen. We start seeing some really bizarre things in Roswell. I think the government, and, and Heiser makes the point, like the government was all too happy to be able to blame it on aliens. Because it was two years rather after the Rather than to tell the, the public the truth. Yeah. Correct. Imagine if it had come out, this is Nazi technology, and we're getting it from a Nazi scientist working in Roswell, New Mexico. Like, excuse me, what? No, you don't. You know, these guys just murdered six million Jews, and now we're about to bring them in and use their, you know, utilize what they have. Like, that would have caused America to flip out. They could not tell the public the truth. And so what do you do? And you see all the supposed conspiracy theories of, you know, the uh, what the Japanese were working on floating, like, basically weapons of mass destruction over, like, all of this uh, biological weapons um, in balloons over to America. And, like, these things were found. And they told reporters, don't report on this because, first off, we don't want the Japanese to know. Second off, we don't want to trigger mass hysteria. So they would rather float out the idea of aliens, and I think they're doing the same thing now, to cover up what's actually taking place. So if this goes back to the 40s, what else are they covering up? It seems like they trot it out every once in a while when things start to get a little hairy, and I agree with you, this government currently is in shambles, and they need something that's going to distract from some of and they're things. And they're succeeding Jack, what I mean, they re- that's what everybody's talking about, and a lot of the other stories are kind of getting brushed to the side. Yeah, I think it can be two things two things in the it's a distraction but it is something they had in their back pocket they had footage they had testimony they had whatever else and so that that is something to be grappled with of it can be a distraction that they have had they've documented they've, they're doing whatever and at the opportune moment okay now let's talk about it now and so i know a lot of people saying it's a distraction yes but that still doesn't do away with the issue here and so i, I think you make interesting points about the development of it over the 40s 50s 60s as to what they're going to do with it next, you know, what, what it could lead to, whether it's climate tyranny, whether it's, you know, they're the, the technological hoaxes where they could really just be putting something on and saying, well, these guys came and they said, we got to, we all got to do this. We all got to do that. Like, who knows? I mean, there, there's some wild conspiracies out there as to what it could be, but you know what? If they didn't want to have people theorizing conspiracy things and those things gaining legitimacy, gaining trust, gaining widespread acceptance, they shouldn't have lied to us so much. I mean, like, they shouldn't Amen. over the, uh, the history of all this, but also the last few years. I mean, like, they lost all trust three years ago. And so, I'm sorry, the the guy on YouTube with a what used to be a crackpot channel has as much credibility as the New York Times or the because Pentagon. People, yeah, at this because, point. like, so, two years ago, people who were saying that, that COVID leaked from a Japanese lab were called conspiracy theorists. And then, lo and behold, guess what happened? Right. Chinese, but yeah. Just, Chinese. Just, yeah, that's right. You're going to have the, the one <laughs> guy. Check. Like, yeah, yeah, sorry. But, Chinese. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> rarely do we get to uh, let our weirdo flag fly on think deeper so we've already gone that direction a little bit <laughs> let's get really weird here option number this three part. option number three these things are real they are not aliens they are not from another planet they are from another dimension they are demons let's get into it i i think this is the most valid option in my opinion, because I think it blends the two perfectly. You can't say all of these things are hoaxes and fakes after tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people are seeing things that cannot be explained. To your point, Will, earlier, you talked about, you know, you said, I don't think people have ever seen, that actually goes against some of the 
supposed sightings of being of the abductions of things weird things i guess i meant like the hollywood guy, depictions like the you know correct the one-eyed green that. people type of thing i'd agree with that there's a couple guys that i think are very interesting some of these guys are way off the deep end but whitley Stryber um was a guy who ended up writing a book about what happened he called them visitors that he was taken into the middle of the woods and it seemed like a mind control thing some people think it was an mk ultra like that was you know basically they were undergoing mind control and he was putting aliens in place of government officials doing this to him but supposedly it happened over and over and so he kind of kept quiet about it for a little while then he wrote some things on it um and that they implanted a device in his ear um billy meyer is another guy that founded his own religion i think and and claimed to see these um, other beings that they actually had physical contact they actually were like probing him and cutting him and things like that um and the weird thing is again they seem to be in some of these situations uh and some of these instances able to back up some of it based on the tests that they're running and based on the fact that like not that that they were again not an aliens but that something did happen to them now here's the really weird part i'm going to mention this one and you guys can get in some other ones because we were talking off air about this the billy meyer one is very very weird um he is somebody that again kind of started his own he's a swiss farmer supposedly he's contacted by this being and the being like passes away and then sends the granddaughter to come visit him and the granddaughter's name i want to make sure i get this right is basically semyesa semyase um s-e-m-j-a-s-e and here's the truly bizarre part there is a being mentioned in the book of enoch that is semyaza um almost identical and it is a demon that is referenced in Genesis 6, or it's not actually referenced in Genesis 6, but in the book of Enoch, which we know is referenced in Jude. Like, Enoch goes back thousands of years. Um, whether you want to say that's legit or not, it's not canonical. It's not in Scripture. At the same time, some really weird things come up, and it happens to specifically mention a demonic being named Semyaza. And he happens to be contacted by this Semyaza, who Almost is telling exactly him all the about same this... Name almost exactly the same name who's telling him about the inner light and this basically new age religion that he needs to start and how there's a god inside all of us um well that seems pretty weird when you consider the fact that you look back and what's been one of the biggest i mean we see these local gods all throughout the old the old testament that people are bowing down and they're worshiping to and to me it very much seems that that is all in reference to genesis 6 with the sons of man uh, um, we're with the the sons of God falling, mating with the sons well, of women, hold, having hold the nephilim, off. We'll get on, we'll get to that in a bit. Okay, that, okay. That part is. It, I the... think it, it's all tied to where Simyasa comes from, though, in the fact that I think these things took place. Like the fact that he is is contacted by this being. Now, maybe he did his research, and skeptics will say, "Well, he must have known about that." He's a Swiss farmer that seemingly has no tie to scripture or anything else. So. That's a bit of a stretch that he would know some obscure thing referenced one time in the Book of Enoch. Maybe yes, but some of the things that he's pushing seem to have "quote unquote" validity in this realm. Um, and he's, yeah. Have y'all have y'all seen that meme goes. where it's like two people in class and it's like, "Hey, can I copy off your test?" And they're like, "Yeah, just change it up a little bit so that it's not exactly the same." That's what I thought of when <laughs> like the two names that are <laughs> almost exactly the same yep. and they change up just a little bit. Um, no, one of the things that I wanted to bring up is, is that I came across while I was researching this, that I, I it never struck me this way before, but it, it, it was like, yeah, that's exactly right, is that there are a lot of Christians who will look at some of this stuff, the the, de- the demons and the, the spiritual entities and the things that are unexplainable, sorcery, magic, and, you know, just things that we can look at and say, a lot of people will say, no, that's kind of ridiculous, that's sci-fi, that's, that's fake, that's made up. And one of the points that was made was something that I was listening to about this is like the Bible literally talks about this stuff. The Bible literally talks about Joe. You brought up like the the fact that they were worshiping, you know, entities Baal and uh, Astra and all these. Like, do you think they were really just worshiping bricks or or rocks that that did nothing? Like they were worshiping them for a reason. 
probably because they 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 were some kind of demonic influence. You've got the the sorcerers. Paul called them demons. Yeah. Paul when at the meat sacrificed to idols, he said these idols are demons. Yeah, exactly. You've got the the sorcerers in Egypt that were able to replicate what was it the first three plagues and couldn't and after the third one they couldn't replicate any more of them. Like, was that just a hoax or were they like there there are all these things that you see in scripture that we can very easily today just kind of brush aside and say, oh, well, that's 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 from a Star Wars movie, or that's sci-fi, that's made up, that's a hoax. And it's like, th- this has some legitimacy because the Bible talks about it, and for us to just brush it aside kind of nonchalantly seems pretty irresponsible. And so that speaks to the point you were bringing up just a second ago, Joe. It's like... Yeah, I I don't know. It's it's very it's a very bold statement to try to say that all of it is completely made up when the Bible has things in it that are pretty you know spiritual entities and things that are kind of unexplainable in human terms, but we see evidence for it in the Bible. Does that make sense? Why would Josiah go after all the the sorcerers, all the magicians? Right. Why would Saul go after all of them? We say, well, you know, the one that he runs into where she raises the the witch of was it witch of Endor. Mm-hmm. Endor, yes, it is Endor, and I was like, that's Star Wars, yeah, same one. <laughs> Where anyway. she consults Samuel, um, saying, or brings up Samuel. Yes, whatever, consult, yeah. brings up Samuel, and everybody goes, well, see, this proves that it's not legit. She was scared when she brought up Samuel. No, no, she was scared when she saw that it was Saul who was hiding, and Saul had said, I'm putting to death all of the sorcerers uh, and, and sorceresses. So she was freaked that she's in the presence of the man who had made the decree, I'm going to kill you, right? Why is, why is Saul trying to kill him? Because they're legit. Because if these were people that were charlatans and people that were ridiculous and, you know, flash and, you know, little smoke and, and smoke and mirrors, all that stuff, why in the world would you go after those people to kill them? Clearly they had some sort of, they were driven by some demonic power, in my opinion, that gave them powers to do things that were not of this world. Otherwise they're not a threat and there's no reason why God is telling them to go after these people. Now, I think when you go down this road, you start to see these sightings, these Beings communicating with people, beings that seem more powerful than us, they can do things that we can't. Literally every culture has had them. Not only do these these biblical things we're referencing, but every culture has had the, the being that they worshipped, whether it's Thor and Odin, whether it's the, the Greek gods and then the ones that the Romans straight ripped off from them because it was the same ones. Uh, the Eastern ones, the, uh, what is it, the, the Hindu one, the goddess, the Kali, uh, Straight up, all kinds of evil. I mean, uh, death, dead babies, you know, like this this evil woman, female god thing. But, like, all these people have these claims on these beings that had these things. We are a very naturalistic society. And so we look at everything through science and, okay, hey, there's these beings that can do stuff we can't. They've got to be from another planet. They've got to come from these other places. Well, what if they're the same uh, as what mankind has always seen? I was listening to a book by an Orthodox guy. Uh, Orthodox, I, I think he's a priest, and or was a priest in the Orthodox Church, and that was his claim. And he was even sourcing and citing stuff from early church writings because that's what the Orthodox are super big into for the first three and four hundred years of Christianity of them interacting with these beings and abductions and things like that, and and praying and overcoming, you know, through the name of Christ, kind of thing, and like literal stuff that you can go read in what what's called the early church fathers' writings of, yeah, no, these these things are real, they're still out there, they're, you know, at work, and so we are the weird ones who post-World War II and nuclear and, and flight and all the technology we've got, we're going, wow, this must be advanced technology, when literally if we compared notes with every society going back to the history of mankind, they'd be like, yeah, yeah, we saw those too, and it wasn't, we didn't think it was from another planet. But maybe they're masquerading. Maybe these demons that are using that, that have been around for so long, are just masquerading behind our technology. Because it is easy to use the technology to trick. Because isn't it interesting that a lot of what these entities push and a lot of these guys that either start their own religions or follow the religions of what they're told to follow from these aliens, quote unquote. It's kind of a one world religion. Follow the inner light. You know, every, there's a God within all of us. It's very early. It's an anti Christian really. message, is what it is. Very yes. much. I think it was interesting, the one I read a bit ago about the people having real PTSD. It said one of the other effects that was very commonly shared was New Age beliefs and a whole, the whole psychic manifesting the universe kind of the, the way people talk. That's really weird that they all came out of these encounters going, yeah, I, I believe this way now. That, that I, I think these guys had this right. This is what they told me about myself and about life and the world and the universe. And uh, yeah, 
Like that that's not a coincidence. Right. Which would which would once again. again support the the notion that these are demonic entities that are once again opposed to Christ, that are opposed to the message of the gospel. And so you know, that was one of the things as you look at a lot of these stories, like Jackie just brought up, the message that was presented by these aliens or these extra extraterrestrial creatures or whatever was it always seemed to conveniently choose to pick on Christianity, not any other religions. They they never you know called out the Buddhists. They never called out the Hindus or the Muslims. It was always the fact that Jesus was you know, you know they, they would downgrade Jesus or denigrate Jesus and uh, kind of push a an anti Christian message. Once again, seems to be pretty coincidental that Christianity was the only religion they were doing that to. We've got two verse Bible verses on here. Yeah, did you have something to add, Joe? Well, yeah, just on that, I, I brought up that book. I'll just say the name so people can check it out if they want. It's Orthodoxy and the Religion of the Future by Seraphim Rose. Um, again, he's Orthodox, so it comes from that perspective. But he spends like the first five chapters talking about Eastern religions, Buddhism, Hinduism, and how America, this was in the 60s and 70s, was coming to embrace it. And, you know, the Beatles bringing their stuff in and uh, like all, all the the drug culture and everything that was around it. And it was like, man, I thought this book was out aliens. Why is he going on and on and on and on about this? Well, with the Eastern religion, it really is that let's all get along. Hey, and what they were trying to get was for Christians to join on stage. And they were starting to do this in America. These Buddhist and Hindu monks would come over and Christian leaders would get on stage with them and be like, we're all God's children. We're all together. We're all one. And then he gets to the part of, hey, and we're seeing these beings that are telling us to do this. Like this is you know, sourced from the the same place as these demonic religions of, of, you know, Eastern cultures, that's what they believe. And that's what people are hearing from these beings, what they're reporting they're being told in these encounters. It's pretty wild. And that goes perfectly into these verses you're about to cite. Joe, did you have anything before I get into the... Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say there was that one study where a guy I present, I mean, I think it was like 1992, a paper that he presented um, to a conference of how similar demonic like what was it satanic worship rituals and being abducted there were multiple markers back and forth you know concerning the abuses the sexual abuse and the physical violence and and so many different things that connected between what people were reporting from these alien abductions quote unquote and satanic worship rituals and what you know the kind of the thought was that these people are potentially being taken into these rituals drugged we know that psychedelics are a big part of the new age. We're seeing this more. Colorado is legalizing it. People are starting to bring it into to therapy and the psychedelic uh, or the psilocybins and microdosing, they call it. And you're supposed to get in touch with the inner light. You're supposed to get in touch with these, you know, See, kind you of the, the keep, universe. You, hold on. Hold, let's, let's do these verses. I know. Because that's that's the, the, the finishing to tie this all See, up because it really no. is powerful. Let's, let's let Will get to these because it, sure. it goes with where we are. I'm gonna st- I don't even think those go into the finishing, but go, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go for start it. and go. Man, Jack and Joe's battle of, of staying on the outline is, is entertaining for me at least. Uh, Galatians one eight is where I'm gonna start. Obviously, Paul starts out the um, book of Galatians, kind of chastising the Galatians for turning aside to a different gospel and for wanting to go back to Judaism. And so, in verse eight. He says, but, if it, if, but even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. So there he's clearly referencing some kind of, of spiritual entity that would have the potential to preach a different gospel. There's verse, I would encourage everybody, and we should have said this earlier probably, um, but I would encourage everybody to go back. I believe it was before, right before Christmas of last year, we did an episode with Dr. Kerry Williams um, about kind of spiritual warfare angels and demons i think is what we actually titled the uh the episode where we got into a little bit more about this this idea of satan and his fallen angels and angels and demons and things like that but then the other one probably more familiar to people second corinthians eleven fourteen, and no wonder for satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light Guys, I mean, these are pretty clear indicators that there, there are, there is the potential for spiritual beings to come and masquerade as something to to preach or to to pass on a message that is antithetical to the gospel of Christ. That seems to support a lot of what these reports, alleged sightings, seem to, again, the message that they're, that they're trying to push. What would you guys have to add to those two verse references specifically? I would just add another one in Jude in the fact that. They talk about like reviling angelic majesties. Don't do it. 
don't do it. As you're talking about these things, you're talking about the the angels, the demons, like don't revile or don't speak against things. And and this is Michael wouldn't even utter a, a you know this reviling against Satan himself, the angel or the archangel Michael. If he's not going to do it, don't mess with it is really the point. And you see this throughout scripture of the angel of light, the things that you're bringing up, these things are absolutely real. Our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces of darkness. And Ephesians makes that very clear. The whole point of this is like, don't summon these things. Don't do Ouija boards. Don't mess with them. Again, I'm jumping ahead, I guess, to Jack's unifying theory he's about to get to. But like, don't mess with these things because it is legit. Satan is out there. He is masquerading as this angel of light. And when you consider the angel of light, how great does the message of tolerance, that Jack was just talking about that, how great does that sound? From a Christian perspective who's to be known for their love, how loving is it to get on stage with Buddhist monks and talk about how we're all, you know, we're all one, we're all children of God. That sounds so enlightened. That sounds so good. And it's garbage. It's a different gospel. But right. to the average, it's a different gospel. But to the average person who doesn't know any different, that looks like it's legitimate. And so this is where Satan comes in and really deceives us. He deceives the nations because he gets us to think these things are legitimate the same way he did all the way back in the garden with, uh, with Adam and Eve getting them to question God's love for them, getting to question God, you know, his his power basically, and you can be like God. And it's just so deceiving. And we're still seeing that to this day. He's running the same play 6,000 years later, and we're still falling for it. All right. All right, Jack. You were getting into Go the drug it. thing. Here, here's why I'm hitting the brakes on this. Some people are very familiar with everything we're covering here. Some of the people who are listening. Some people are listening to us going, these guys have lost their minds, they're nuts, other people are, are having their own minds blown, and like, wow, I never knew, and this is great. There's all kinds of reactions. We've got to take this off in, in small, bite-sized pieces and then put the puzzle back together at the at the end. And so I wanted to stop on that false religion segment of it for that uh, part, but these all flow into each other. And that next one that you were about to get into, the drug side of this, the, the pharmacaea, the what people are seeing, and that there is a rising popularity in this as well, which very closely maps to what people are seeing from demons. It, uh, I mean, from uh, from from aliens, I should say. It, there's there's a lot here as well, and so I, you had a point you were going on. I made you hit the brakes, but th- that's why. So right, let's go with it now. Sure, sure. So in this new age religion, isn't it interesting that they all basically go on acid trips? Like this is a a keystone for some of this new age of like finding the inner light and connecting with the universe and so you take these drugs these again psilocybin whatever it is and micro dosing specifically in in therapy but they're also taking it you know in in bigger forms in other places and shrooms and things like that we know and i think it's a dmt jack correct me if i'm wrong dmt and ayahuasca there you go have these were what you could describe it as is mass hallucinations where Everybody is hallucinating the same exact thing, the world over. So they, yeah, well, yeah. like it, one guy could do it this day, and another guy could do it three weeks later, and they could go and they talk about the same being that they went and had a conversation with on their their drug. Asking high. them, asking them similar questions, and we're talking in America, and we're talking in other parts of the world as well, where people will report what they saw while specifically a DMT in ayahuasca. And it tracks with a spiritual being, and there are some of them that came out of that that trip that they were on so freaked out that they actually found God, because it's like this: we're not alone. There is some. There's a spiritual realm out there, and that freaked me out to the point that I need to figure out how I'm going to defend against this because it scares them so much. Once again, the PTSD symptoms we're talking about. This is legitimate. That it, that's that's physically impossible for people to hallucinate the same thing in different time periods and all over the world. You can say, oh, they're getting together. No. Because as they're telling their stories, they're coming together going, that happened to me. Oh, and that happened to me. And they're both bringing pieces to the puzzle. It'd be easy for a guy to tell the story and one guy goes, oh, that's exactly how it was. No, this guy tells a little bit. This guy tells a little bit. That guy tells a little bit. And they're all adding to it going, that's exactly what it is. And he also told me this. And they go, no way. That's what happened to me. Like, this is documented. So if everybody wants to go look this up, it takes you on a weird Google rabbit hole. But legitimately, these things are documented that people have these quote-unquote mass hallucinations but this has been documented in history going way back these things have taken been taking place for thousands of years get us into the pharmacaea one of one of you can take the pharmacaea approach all right are you guys ready for the grand unifying theory i, I just have been put all I've of these pieces together just, just, the suspense is killing me jack go for it all right this is in theory this is connecting dots this is taking assumptions this is taking a non-canonical 
Bible adjacent book and, and leaning on it a little bit. However, when you put all these dots together, it draws a picture that is pretty compelling. So that's what we're going to do. You brought up pharmakeia. That is when the Bible condemns sorcery, especially in the, the Greek, the New Testament. That's the word it uses is pharmakeia, pharmacy, plants, drugs, medicines, things like that. And the idea of an altered state in your mind. Uh, we, we did substances a while back. I mean, that is something that was not good, but it, it was considered a form of so sorcery, potions, whatever else. And so people would do that. Well, let's bring in Genesis 6. We referenced it a little bit earlier. The Nephilim, there was that you know thing about uh, somebody was Semyasa, the, the being that was, yeah, all that went into that. So in Genesis chapter 6, you read about the sons of God went into the daughters of men. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, men of renown. And there's debate over this. If the sons of God was just the line of Seth intermarrying with the line of Cain and the, the good people became corrupted, or... If sons of God means the same thing it does like over in Job, where the sons of God are the angels, are the... And so you reference Jude, which says that angels you know, left their proper abode. Uh, well, if that was their proper abode, and then they went and intermarried or, or reproduced or possessed somebody and reproduced and created these demon, essentially mega babies in genesis 6 that those on the on the earth before the flood were these superhuman beings that's one of the two major interpretations of it and i think when you start connecting these dots it does lend towards maybe believing that so the book of first enoch what it, it it's maybe bible fan fiction it, it's i don't know what to do with it it's not inspired once again there's a reason it's not part of the 66 but jude draws on it we know. book yeah jude at the very least, they cited the same source. At the very least, Jude, you know, and there was parallel there. And so it, it was probably very, it was almost essentially not written by Enoch because of when it came out. You know, he was very early on. This was not something that was just with the people of Israel all the way back to Abraham's day or anything like that. But having said that, the book of Enoch details supposedly what happened with these these Nephilim beings, these uh, the demonic creatures coming and, and mating with women and creating these and what they did was teach them to use plants, use the pharmacaea to communicate with them, to, to open their minds, to show them things. And so, uh, in fact, let me read this uh, from the book of, it's the book of First Enoch is technically what it's called. All the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one, and they began to go in unto them and defile themselves with them. They taught them charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots and made them acquainted with plants. Those drugs Joe was just talking about are root plants that people use to get high and, and then get in contact with these entities that look like aliens that tell them, hey, you, you know, not no religion is right. They're all right. Okay, so that's all there. So the uh, they would communicate with them and they would teach them things. They would teach them technological advances. advances. They would teach them... Uh, how to do things that mankind did not know how to do on their own. So I mentioned earlier the ancient aliens guy saying, oh, the pyramids, that was aliens, and these, these societies and these incredible buildings, Stonehenge, that was aliens, that was aliens. What if it was demons teaching people to communicate with them, and through the, the communication process there, we're giving them and teaching them this technology and the power that they had, and we're able to do things that we still can't understand because of the communication and the contact they were having with these beings. Now you fast forward to the future. What is the drug capital, I guess, of America? The, the peace, love, drugs, free love, 60s, 70s. What was kind of the, the central spot of that? San Francisco. And not you know, like the Height Ashbury District of San Francisco is famous for it. Of people on all kinds of the heaviest drugs you could find. What is the tech capital of America? San Francisco, Silicon Valley, right? And so you've got these drugs where people can go communicate with demons, and maybe back in the day, the Nephilim thing, that's where mankind had technology that we still don't understand. Now you have today, right around the same area where people are heavily in contact or, or using these things that maybe give them contact, the technological advancement. And so now you bring it back to the alien thing, and people are seeing more and more because we as a society have opened ourselves up to this more. We are, and, and so, again, do with that what you will. I, 
it's theory. I can't. It's not. I Bible. think that is it, the most excited I've ever seen Jack on the Think Deeper podcast to to explain something. Might that's, be. Might be. I don't know about that. That's I was just, fascinating. You get riffing, you know, yeah, like, yeah. and again, there's going to be people who just like turned it off in their car and went, "These guys are crazy." I'm never <laughs> listening again. That's fine. Some people are going to go, "Okay, that makes a lot of sense." I don't know. Whatever you want to do with it. If this episode you go okay that's weird next week i hope they talk about baptism again and we're we're, we're back it's on something okay, that's no, great cool. it's, it's something you know? because once again i i want to refer back to what did the people in the old testament who did not worship god what did they worship it wasn't a pile of bricks it wasn't just rocks it wasn't just trees like th- there were reasons why they were worshiping these quote-unquote gods you think about elijah on mount carmel if 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 the you know how they expected their god to provide fire for for the altar. Do you think that if they had spent, you know, a dec- decades, hundreds of years worshiping these gods that had never done anything supernatural, why on earth would they have expected their gods to to create fire on the altar? Why would they cut themselves cutting and themselves do, yeah, yeah. And, and do all these things for something that they knew was a hoax or something that had never happened before? It just doesn't make sense that they clearly believed that this could happen because it had happened before. What Child was sacrifice? Baal a god of? What was Baal a god of? Weather, right? What's Thor? What's right. I mean, every culture has one of these. Chris and Hemsworth. and when you start digging into it, it's like, that was the same guy all over the planet. That's the other thing that I left out of the grand unifying theory where they talk about these this ancient technologies. You know what they've got all over the planet? The exact same temples. They were all worshiping the same things in Guatemala, in Brazil, Cigarettes, yeah. In, yeah, in the Middle East, in, in Asia. I mean, like... There's even those there, that have popped up on Antarctica. Have you seen that? Where people are starting to point to pyramid-like structures on. I don't know if that's legit or not, but they're saying like these are all over the world, and we can't explain these pyramid structures of how they were created. The ziggurats, like, well, yeah, if they're the high places and if they're temple it, worship, pretty weird that everybody all over the world was building the exact same thing. Yeah, I mean, and child sacrifice. Look at look at the Mayans. Look at the Aztecs. Look at. Um, the Philistines, look at the Assyrians. Child sacrifice is a thing. Look at where we are today with abortion. Well, and again, Jack, yeah, Jack, you already said it. Like, if people are still listening to the to, to us at this point, it, it means that you are at least intrigued by it, if nothing else. And so I wanted to, to bring it full circle because does it impact our salvation? Of course not. If you if you you know don't believe that anything that we said has any legitimacy, no problem. Like we can still fellowship with each other, and you know, there, there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a big deal when it comes to our salvation. But to say that that we shouldn't talk about it, or that, um, you know, we sh- we shouldn't be asking questions, or that we shouldn't investigate, or that we shouldn't go to the f- book of First Enoch, or any of these things, again, is is pretty irresponsible because it's important to see how does our current culture, how do the things that our society is talking about, how do they fit into the biblical picture? Because everything fits into the biblical picture. If we truly believe the Bible is inspired, we truly believe Christianity is, is true and is real, then everything fits into the biblical picture somehow. The theory that Jack just went over, pretty good way to fit into the biblical picture without you know having to make the jumps that there's green Martians and, and you know guys with one eyes that are driving UFOs around that doesn't seem to fit with the biblical picture. And so, again, we firmly believe that everything that we just talked about for the last 20 minutes or so is the best logical explanation. Is it perfect? Do we have everything right? Probably not, to be honest. Like, you know, we, we don't know everything, of course, but I, I wanted to, to bring that up because everything that, that we're looking at in today's culture and society fits into the biblical picture somehow. We just have to figure out how. We just have to figure out so that, again, to bring it back to what I started out talking about, when our kids come to us with questions, we don't just br- push them aside and say, ah, don't worry about it. Not that big a deal. Doesn't doesn't impact our salvation. It's not a doctrinal issue. Okay, sure. Granted. Let's talk about it at least. Let's try to fit it into the biblical picture. What did you guys have to add to that as we kind of get ready to wrap here? I, I would just want people to really weigh. We talked about how this has really been a steady climb over like five to ten years of a little bit of releases, a little bit of testimony, a little bit of congressional hearings like we saw the other day, and it's ramping up slowly but surely. If that continues, it will reach a fever pitch where it is all anybody's talking about. I mean, you think COVID was a big deal? If they really pull out, you know, some ship, some body, some something, you know, like some things that they're claiming they're having, that's going to be everywhere. And there's going to be debate, oh, is this just a... Hollywood hoax thing? Is this real? Is this... But it's going to be everywhere. And if as Christians, 
it's I don't I don't really have an opinion on that. I you know it's it's probably probably nothing. Like okay, I mean like that's this is everyone's gonna want to know, and and there's gonna be people going, well, this disproves your faith. Exactly. I exactly. think knowing you know and being able to ground our fact uh, ground our feet on there's not extraterrestrial life. This is something that's been happening, phenomena that people have seen forever, and it was always one thing, and it's probably that right now today. I think that's, I take comfort in that. I take comfort in, as this news story progresses over the years, like, yeah, I already know what I, I already know the truth about this. I know what this is. I know where it stands. And when I first got into all this and was kind of sharing the study with my wife, the grand unifying theory, which isn't mine, it's pieced together from a bunch of these guys we've, we've cited, um, she was a little nervous, kind of like the suddenly scared of the dark at night kind of thing, because it was like, these things are out there they like because we as christians downplay the demonic downplay the angelic so much that it, like we're so materialist we get away from this stuff they really are out there there really is something going on there we don't have much contact with them and this being where like almost a you've stepped through a new door into a new room where this is like a thing that's the nice thing. Read your Ephesians 6, read your Ephesians 1. Jesus triumphed over the principalities and powers. He came, he bound the strong man so he could plunder his house. This all belongs to him. And that's what the Christian missionaries did. You know, when the guy, St. Boniface, went and chopped down the, the tree, the oak of uh, Thor, and they were like, oh, it's all it's going to strike you to death if you touch that tree. He's like, yeah, no, Jesus Jesus owns Thor. Jesus destroyed Thor. You don't. He's nothing. I'm not worried about it. You don't have to worry about it. And so I, I think those are the two big takeaways is if this news story progresses, you know exactly what it is, and you got nothing to be afraid of. Like, people are going to be terrified if this does become a bigger thing of what if they're going to come and it's War of the Worlds or the Avengers and they're coming out of the sky to blow us up. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Joe? I got nothing, man. It's a great way to wrap. Yep. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for thanks for delving into the weird with us. That, um, that's like our, our once a year. We're gonna let ourselves get this weird, this this off the beaten path, this uh, different. But we are inviting but in reality, in all comments too. I mean, it, we like like Jack said, he posted earlier today. I think it was and had somebody share their experience. And you know, go ahead. If this don't get you commenting for the deep end, <laughs> not, none of our none of ours will. Okay, please comment. We would love to to uh, cover that. If you have questions, if you want to hear the deep end segment, we will maybe we'll go into this a little bit further. Uh, we can clarify some things in the deep end. You'll have to subscribe for that one to Focus Plus. So please do so if you haven't. But we'd love to hear from you on that and, and get your comments and questions about it. All right. Let's wrap right there. We will talk to you guys next week. <laughs>